Well, it's just about three o'clock. Let me check if this is recording. Yeah, it is recording. It's supposed to make a beep sound, but it doesn't make always make the beep sound, so it's recording. So it's time to uh, uh, do another uh, food shop. Not food shop, but uh, to a separate set, to a separate set of stores. So that's where I'm going now. I'm out. So I'm heading the opposite direction. I've got to get some socks. I have to go to the dollar store. And the store I'm going to has, in terms of the food store, has some good bread that I like. And so I'm going to get that as well. So, but this is how you do things. If uh, you're living a freaking lifestyle, you gave up your car, then you're going to have to walk to do things. And if you can see the back there, that's my backpack. Right? Everything goes in the backpack. So that's kind of how it goes. That's the back there. As you can see that, if you can see the back there, I can't really see what's going on in the monitor, so I'm assuming it caught everything. And if it did, then we're all right. Ugh, stinks. Somebody's doing the roof and <laughs> you can smell the tar. Uh, so yeah, this is my first stop, this factory here. Uh, they are a clothing uh, factory outlet. Buy a lot of major stores with their clothes. So I'm gonna stop off there, get some socks, and see what else is there, and then go from there. All right, I'll talk to you in a bit. Well, it is said, practice makes perfect, right? So if you keep vlogging, particularly while you're walking, you eventually get the hang of it. And that's kind of what we're doing here. Is I'm trying to figure out how to vlog while walking at the same time and control the buttons, you know, without mashing everything up. <laughs> Anyways, I went to the uh, warehouse. It's closed, they've changed their hours. They're only open from Monday to Friday now. Taking weekends off, cool. So, no problem. I'm on to the next series of stores and we'll see what we can get there. I'll let you know what I get on the way back. All right, take it easy. I have no idea what time it is, but I just finished shopping. Uh, I'm on my way home now, so side of vlog. This is what usually happens. This is why I have a big bag. This is why I have a big bag. I never know exactly what I'm gonna get because I don't know exactly what's on sale. If you find something that's good on sale, then you buy it. And that's what I did. I bought some bedding stuff. I went to Sears. They have a Sears outlet there where they have a lot of stuff on discount. Uh, they have another dollar store there. So, basically my bag is filled, uh, I've got a lot uh, in the bag now. I found a way to open up and expand the bag so I can carry more. I mean, sometimes you don't always know the features of everything all, all at once. As you use something, you learn more and more of the features. But if you never use a particular feature, you're not particularly sure how to use it until you absolutely need it. And that's what happens here. It's not that I've got a lot. It's that the bedding stuff, the sheets and the uh, uh, the bed set, is very big. And the bag needs the bag I'm carrying needs to expand in order to carry it. I really didn't know how to do that until well, I put everything in the bag, including the food. Found a zipper, and the zipper holds the bag in. But you undo the zipper. And there's extra room for the bag to come out so you can put more stuff in it. Anyways, 
We're coming to a street where I have to cross, which means I have to turn you off because it's dangerous crossing the street with you on. And well, I'll talk to you afterwards. Are you recording? I can never tell sometimes if it's, if it's recording or not. That's because if uh, that beep doesn't go out and tell us it's recording, the audible beep, then uh, well, can't see the back of the monitor, back of the screen, so kind of have to guess. So I turn the camera around to sort of see if you're on or not. I'm on the left. I've passed the bridge. So I come from over there. There's a whole bunch of streets and bridges over there that I have to cross. Well, one bridge, anyways. And uh, it's not safe to cross when you're uh, talking to the camera. You got to focus on what you're doing. Because sometimes, you know, when you cross the street, cars don't always see you. So you got to make sure that you're seen before you cross. Because, well, yeah, pedestrians have the right of way, but that right of way doesn't do you any good if you're dead. So, <laughs> anyways, as I was walking, and this is what happens as I walk, I think about things. Uh, the thought popped to my mind about the list healthy living. Healthy, you know, there's a, there's a whole uh, group that, uh, community that I, I got onto for uh, uh, Google Plus. And as I said, you have to live your lifestyle. Healthy living is, is not just simply uh, a one off thing. It's something you plan to incorporate into your lifestyle. And so initially it starts off maybe as a one-off thing that you try. But if you find that it works for you, then you've got to figure out how it fits into your life in terms of scheduling and so on and so forth. Anyways, uh, we're coming to another light. And I'm more or less done for now. So I won't turn you back on until I get back to my place and unpack. So anyways, I'll talk to you in a bit. Well, the promise to vlog more is being kept. <laughs> so you are gonna see more. So let's give you the time and date stamp. It is one hour and 43 minutes into the day of, uh, of Monday, March 24th, 2014. Yeah, uh, I'm still, uh, my body's still kind of sore. Uh, if you watch the uh, first segment, this is the second segment, uh, you know I went food, I went shopping again. Uh, I did get some food, but mostly I went to, I ended up going to Sears and getting, uh, they had a sale on bedding there, and I got some uh, uh, sheets and I got uh, a, a new bed set. I always get a couple of them because I changed, uh, I changed my bedding just about uh, uh, every three months uh, because you take the, you take the old stuff off, you wash it, and you put something new back on. And, and so while it was in the wash, uh, you have a, a, something else on there. And that way it changes things up a bit for the room. Uh, that being said, oh, oh, sorry. That being said. Uh, I went uh, I went and did a bit of, uh, as I was watching some TV and getting something to eat, I went and did a bit of a YouTube stroll. This includes actually now, because of the way uh, G Plus is uh, connected to uh, YouTube, uh, that you off, often go off to uh, G Plus and see what's going on. Well, I have this one uh, person who subscribes, who's, who's, uh, uh, who sort of watches the videos. Uh, his name is K. M uh, Mueller. And he was... Uh, Sort of talking about global warming and stuff like that, and there's a lot of people out there into global warming, they're in, into all this sort of, this environmental stuff, but they're not necessarily uh, gung ho on what the government's actually doing. And what they don't necessarily understand, and this is actually come, uh, is that activism is, uh, from my perspective, uh, useless. The reason why it's useless is because activism comes from a political class of people who actually don't do anything specifically anyways. I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. If uh, you know what a maker fair is, then you know there's a whole, uh, you know what open source is, then you know there's a whole community out there of people developing technology. And that's what open source is. Open source is open development of technology. 
there's no restriction. There's no uh, companies involved. Not, you know, in terms of uh, co corporate restrictions, it's it's a very open environment. And this is this is what Linux is. If, if if you know what open source is, you know what Linux is. If you know what Linux is, you know what open source is. This and Linux is a, a community developed uh, operating system. It's not developed by one person. It's developed by a community. And so far things are, are all right. There are problems. There are issues. Uh, as with all things, but on the on the whole, it's, it's pretty good. And the thing is, is that there is no reason just the way you have the community development of Linux that you couldn't have had something that a community development you couldn't have because they do have open source technology, they do have open source hardware. There's no reason they couldn't have had a development in solar in, in solar technology in what call so called green technology. The problem that's been that 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 surrounds green technology is has to do with one the physics of it and two what and what physicists even when they're in the open environment end up doing now the whole issue of global warming comes not from the physics community where it should come from but rather from a group of, uh, of scientists called climate scientists and they're not really they're not real I wouldn't really necessarily call them they're not they're not scientists in the in the manner that, that a physicist is, a, physis, a physicist is. Uh, a physicist is a different class of scientist altogether. If you're a good physicist, then you sit at the pinnacle of all you sit at the pinnacle of all science, and as such, you can sort of work your way through most most scientific literature to figure out what's what. And what happens is you actually start you start asking yourself as a physicist some very basic questions. Is something that's being proposed to be in effect real or is it a hallucination? And the way you tell something that it is real is does it have fundamental physical physical properties? Does it meet the, the, the fundamentals of physics? If it doesn't meet the fundamentals of physics, then you have an issue here where you might be looking at something else. You, something may appear to be one thing, but maybe something else entirely. And then we know this in we know this in astronomy because we know that that objects do appear to have properties only by appearance only, but when you do actually go and examine them through through you know spectroscopy and other mechanisms and that they have the the properties that we thought they had were simply an apparent property. There was there was some condition accelerating or altering the initial particular point of view. And I'll give an example in, in spectroscopy. Uh, let's say you have a light source and you want to take a look at that light source and find out what the light source is made out of. And this is what they do with stars. Uh, they, they take the light from the star and they uh, uh, look at the fingerprint uh, from that star. One of the things they have to consider when you're doing spectroscopy is that the space in between can add in and subtract lines. In other words, there is an absorption rate that goes from the star to you when you're viewing the star from to yourself there's an absorption rate so what happens is that the interstellar space in between that dust in between can cause problems with with, with your with your spectroscopy rating if you're not aware that there is a uh, uh, gas in, in between yourself and space in, in space so you can't rely on the one reading you have to get a whole group of readings and then you take the, the readings as a group rather than the individual reading uh, because of the uh, absorption problem. Well, this problem exists, this type of apparent problem exists in with the climate science, particularly with uh, global warming. While ice cores do appear to be showing a, ri uh, a rise in carbon dioxide, uh, which say, they say is the, the, the uh, leading cause of global warming, the problem is uh, uh, carbon dioxide does not have global warming properties. It does not cause heat. In other words, it, it, well, yeah, carbon dioxide does trap heat. It's a great, it's a great absorber of uh, microwave radiation. The problem is, it does not have the physical properties that remain in the atmosphere. It's heavier, it's heavier than air. All you have to do is fill up a balloon full of carbon dioxide, and you'll see that a balloon full of carbon dioxide will sink to the ground. Put a balloon full of helium, it will rise, right? Put a balloon full of air, it has some degree of buoyancy, but if you take the air balloon and you take the uh, carbon dioxide balloon and the carbon di and drop them together, the carbon dioxide balloon will, balloon will, will, will drop faster. It will, it will have a heavier reaction to it. Uh, uh, and I'm going to have to come back into a second segment on this because it is a little more complicated, so let me just do that there.
Okay, so we're back again. It, you know, it, it takes two. It's gonna take two segments to finish this up here. So, um, as I say, you'll you notice the physical properties from air to, from air to uh, carbon dioxide are, are different, and you know that as you're looking at this, that you cannot keep carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. It's simply not possible because carbon dioxide is heavier. Carbon dioxide responds to heat. In other words, it only becomes buoyant as a part of as a small part of air. It is not the main component of air that causes it to be buoyant. Um, so you you have to discount that uh, the amount of carbon dioxide uh, to to you know to really sort of understand that carbon dioxide is not the cause of global warming. And the thing is, is that if you look at uh, uh, Mars, which has a large carbon dioxide atmosphere, and ask yourself, well, if Mars has a large carbon dioxide atmosphere, why isn't, why don't you have a greenhouse effect there? And the thing is, is that, unfortunately, again, again we're looking at physical properties, uh, Carbon dioxide is not part of the greenhouse effect. When you walk into the people, oh, people walk in, walk into a greenhouse. Oh, you hear, you see how hot it is. That's the greenhouse effect. That's carbon dioxide. No, that is not carbon dioxide. If that were carbon dioxide, and we've seen this before when you've had uh, volcanic lakes that have these carbon dioxide bubbles in it, when carbon dioxide is let loose in massive amounts that we talk about for greenhouse for the greenhouse being the greenhouse effect. What ends up happening is it ends up, uh, it's a low lying gas, and we've seen this before. If you look in Africa, if you look into the history of Africa, you will find that there are lakes that are volcanic lakes, there are craters covered with the water, volcanic craters covered with water, and that, and, and what happens? There's a, a a bubble of carbon dioxide forms. And this carbon dioxide, every once in a while, bubbles to the surface and is let loose in a large uh, cascade of uh, carbon dioxide. Now, you would expect, if if you're watching the green, if you believe the greenhouse effect, that carbon dioxide would simply, as it's released from the lake, uh, from the bottom bubble of the lake, there's a bubble on the bottom of the lake, right? There's a bubble at the bottom of the lake, and there's the lake itself. The bubble is released. Something disturbs the bubble. The bubble breaks. And it's dispersed in into the lake and then out of the lake into the in, into what they call the in what you call the air. So you would expect if it was normal gas to go up, it would disperse up into the atmosphere. It doesn't do that. Uh, carbon dioxide, if you know dry ice, that's the the that's the fog effect that causes low. The, you, you notice how the it bubbles up and but it stays low lying. It hugs the ground and creates a sort of cloud effect on the ground. That's carbon dioxide. And this is actually what this bubble does. It hugs the ground. And what it does, it, it smothers, it kills anything in its, in its path. Because it's, it, 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 it suffocates it. There's no oxygen. We need oxygen to breathe. right? In order to breathe, we need oxygen. If we walk into a carbon dioxide heavy atmosphere, in any place like that, we'd, 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 we'd be, we would uh, die of as, asphyxiation immediately. Because we wouldn't be able to breathe. You can't breathe carbon dioxide. As a matter of fact, matter of fact if you're in an enclosed place, this is one of the problem with, with closed rooms, and you keep breathing because we exhale carbon dioxide. If you keep exhaling, you know, that room is closed and you don't have a new supply of oxygen. At some point in time, there will be a ratio where carbon dioxide is too high. There's not enough oxygen because we keep putting out oxygen. And you will suffocate to death. That's what happens when kids are locked in freezers. This is why you don't put freezers. You, you, when you, if you're putting out, throwing out a refrigerator or you're throwing out a freezer, you take off the door. Why? Because kids can't hide in there. They can't lock the door. And they can't suffocate in there. Well, this does not happen when you walk into a, a, a greenhouse. If you walk into a greenhouse and you say, oh, that's the greenhouse effect. That's carbon dioxide. Well, why aren't you suffocating to death? Right? That's carbon dioxide. So, it, it, this is what I'm talking about an apparent uh, view of things. The apparent view is that you think something is one thing, but it really isn't. So, what happens is you now know that carbon dioxide is not the greenhouse gas that causes the greenhouse effect in the greenhouse. 
So now you're looking for another gas that does that. And all you have to do in order to find this gas is talk to an astronomer. Ask them what gas causes the most amount of problems uh, when they're looking at through their telescope. And they'll tell you, well, I put my telescope up on the mountain. Why? Because I'm up, I'm up, I'm up above the vapor barrier. Above the what? The vapor barrier. The vapor barrier is the water vapor barrier that hangs low, that forms the clouds. And unfortunately, when it comes to light, vapor barriers are very bad because it absorbs a lot of light and it causes, there's a lot of heat and turbulence in there. And what ends up happening is that in order to give, in order to, to have your best views for your telescope, you need to above, be above that. That's why when you have NASA has this plane called Sophia, which does infrared infrared uh, astronomy. You have to, it, it, it's in a plane because you have to get an altitude above that vapor barrier. And so what happens is they want to do that, they want to do that astronomy, the infrared astronomy, the best way to do it, get an airplane, fly above it, and do your science, and then come back down again. And that's exactly what, what what NASA does. So this tells you that that this whole issue with global warming and in, in, in the politics is not science. Because if you actually look at the science, you look at the physics of it. Uh, the physics isn't there. The physics is simply not there. Furthermore, when you ask yourself about the technology and why you don't have more green technology, all you have to do is look at the open source technology. Look at what's coming out of there in terms of, of, of computer science and computer in terms of biology. There's a whole bunch of stuff coming out of out of out of, out of the open source kind of technology, including 3D printers. Ask yourself, why isn't there the green technology? Why, where is the green technology here? The problem is, is that there isn't the research. The, the, not that there's the, a lot, a large chunk of the research in 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 solar and other technologies have all failed. There, there is, there's a massive amount of failure in there because the, 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 the physics simply isn't there. And so what happens is that there, a large chunk of this activism stuff and ask yourself, why, isn't things, aren't, aren't, why aren't things moving faster? It's very simple because the science isn't there. The whole issue of global warming is an illusion. It's, it's, it's a hallucination. Matter of fact, the, the, the global warming issue didn't come out of observational research. It didn't come from the uh, from the Earth's weather satellites. It came out of a computer prediction. It, it, global warming is a prediction of a computer model, and that's all it is. It has not shown up in any of the real physical environment. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. I've, I've seen the uh, the the, the uh, satellite data. Uh, for climate, for atmospheric physics, there's no global warming effect in there. And unless you show me the data, I'm going to come back in the next segment. This is requiring a third segment. <laughs> Big topic. And that's it. You know, the global warming effect is not showing up in the, uh, in the actual research, in, in the atmospheric physics. In the research, in the actual research from atmospheric physics, I've been tracking weather systems now, in in, in climate systems, and it's and it's, it's very difficult to explain because it's not actually viewed. I don't view things in terms of climate and and, and weather. I view things in terms of thermodynamics, the inflows and outflows of heat and energy. That's basically that's the fundamental physics. The fundamental physics of global warming, if you were talking about global warming, or, is has to do with thermo, thermodynamics. Therm, thermodynamics. It, global warming is supposed to be a thermodynamic effect. If the fundamental thermo, if the fundamental thermodynamic uh, thermodynamics that you observe does not show global warming, then global warming doesn't exist. It's, that, that's as, that's as simple as it gets. And you can't change that because we're talking about observational data. We're not talking about uh, computer models. We're talking about observational data. Basically, you can have a computer model, and then you can you can say anything you wanted to say. But if it does not meet observational data, it's wrong. It's that, that, that it's, it's that simple. It's just simply wrong. Uh, and then you have to go back and redo your mo your model again. And the thing is, is that the the thermodynamics of global warming has not shown up. It's not in the observational data. I've seen the observational data. I've been working on the observational data from the uh, NOAA satellites, from GOES and POSE, and a, various, a variety of other different satellites. 
Uh, I've been working on that data now for more than more than uh, 12 years, and I have not seen the global warming thermodynamic effects. They're not there. Now, why it's in the ice pool? Why it's in the uh, in the uh, in the ice cap? I have no idea. I, I have to sit down and look at a uh, to take a better look at the ice cap data. I have to see. I have to take a look at their methodology. Maybe there's something wrong with the methodology that they're using. That might be showing it, or they may, they may, you may be seeing the right carbon dioxide levels there. But the thing is, what does it necessarily mean that there's more more carbon carbon dioxide in the air? Does it mean that there's more carbon dioxide in the air back then, or is there does it mean something else? So, uh, these are things you sort of have to ask yourself. But right now, there's no there's no uh, global warming effect inside of thermodynamics and because it's not within thermodynamics. There is no global warming. Period. That's the end of the discussion. The rest of the discussion about this beyond thermodynamics is politics. It's about keeping your job. It's about uh, keeping your research lab open. Uh, <laughs> this is basically what it is. Uh, but beyond the thermodynamics, there's nothing there. As for the technology, you also have problems. Like, like the, the greatest you can ever get out of solar, solar technology, because... The sun only only shines for twelve hours, not even sometimes. You, so what happens if you talk? And, and most most solar technologies only work well efficiently at the peak solar. It we call peak solar time, and peak solar time is basically four hours. It's two hours before noon. Right, noon is the highest point that, that you get from the sun, and you have two hours before and two hours after that point, basically from uh, ten a.m to uh, 4 p.m. and time is your measure of where the sun is in the sky. It's not simply a measure of, oh, I've got to go. It's actually a position, it's a measure of the position of the sun in the sky. It's, it's uh, astronomy. Uh, and so if you want to understand uh, the efficiency of the solar activity, you have to go into astronomy for this. And you have, if you want to understand the efficiency of the physics of this, the, you know, the energy output, you have to go into physics. You have, in other words, you have to be an astrophysicist to understand this. You don't have to really understand it. You, and if you really do want to be involved in alternative science in terms of uh, getting alternative energy in there, then you need to get into, uh, in, in, into astrophysics. You know, uh, writing a song about it and going to a protest is not going to change the actual physics. <laughs> Unfortunately, you are going to have to bite the bullet and become a geek. <laughs> uh, and if you understand, if you understand your actual physics, and particularly your solar physics, as it pertains to the Earth, then you understand that what ends up happening is that you have your peak energy, the most efficient energy. This is where your solar, uh, solar, solar power works. Has only a four-hour window out of the uh, out of the uh, out of a 24-hour day. So basically, you have only four hours of 20 hours to to produce energy, and that's actually what's turning out with what's happening. Even with wind power, there are so many inefficiencies coming in that. It is not producing, and they've done this in Ontario, and almost everywhere they've put in uh, wind power technology. The wind power technology is not producing what it predicted was producing. A lot of times, these predictions are done with statistical models, and a lot of times these statistical models are nothing more than hallucinations. You know, you can prove anything with statistics. Statistics is not a proof of anything, unfortunately. Because mathematics do lie, the math does lie, uh, particularly when you adjust it. If you adjust the, the mathematical reality for whatever you want to do it with, and you can do that, you, the adjustments can be done for anything, for any perspective, uh, then you, you, you're simply fooling yourself. Uh, so, in other words, the physics isn't there. Once the physics isn't there, the technology is not gonna is not going to follow because technology follows from physics. And if you're an activist and you're out there banging on a drum, well, unfortunately, if you really want to solve the problem, then you need to get into physics, you need to get into astronomy, and you need to get into open source. Open source is where the, technolo the, 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 the technology solution is. And there's a lot of people in, in open source. All you have to do is go onto Google, type in open source, and you will find a huge group of people working in open source. Technology, they're working in... Um, Hardware, they're working in software. 
they're working in robotics, in almost any field you could name, they're working in. And if that's, if your goal is a better Earth, uh, then uh, that's what you need to do. And this is particularly if you believe in global warming. Then you need to sit down and actually do the work. You know, there's no short, there's no excuse not to do the work because open source technology is there. Anyways, uh, that's my two cents on this. And you see, I'm already doing the work because I'm a freegan. I recycle everything, I upcycle everything. And I am uh, heavily involved in open source. The whole, the whole production here is open source. Everything I buy is refurbished. Everything I buy, I get is recycled. Don't buy anything new here ever. So anyways, uh, that's about it. Uh, I will talk to you next, uh, uh, tomorrow morning. That will be the next BTS vlog, because this, this is it for this BTS vlog. We've, uh, covered, uh, three segments for this alone. So, anyways, hope this helps. <laughs> Alright, take it easy. Bye-bye. Democratic Earth. Earth.